the focus today is not going to be on me, it's going to be on the screen, because we're going to see some wonderful photographs. <clears throat> So, the Jim Bradley Photograph Collection is one of three collections that was donated to the Historical Society in November of 2016. The second collection is the Mary O. Bradley Journalist History Collection, and that is uh, Mary's research for the many articles that she wrote for her columns in the Patriot News and copies of those. And the third collection is the Mary and Jim Bradley Library Collection, which is about uh, railroad history and includes archival materials such as uh, timetables and maps, that type of thing. Now the photo collection was very well organized and identified when it came to us. Jim is very much a detailed person. And the photos and negatives were basically in chronological order, and he organized all his files by date. He did not have a numbering system, but if you ask him for a photo, he can tell you what year he took it. And for our collection, we had to come up and with a, a numbering system of our own. These are, uh, this is a shot of his original boxes and how he had them labeled. So we're moving all the photos from Jim's original boxes into acid-free boxes and folders and interleaving the photos with acid-free paper. We can get about three of his original boxes into one of our acid-free boxes. We had to create an entirely new room, now known as the Bradley Room, to house the collection. We're looking at the left side of the, that room. These boxes hold black and white prints. You can see here a mixture of Jim's original boxes and the new acid-free boxes, because we're still in the process of making that change. On the right side of the room, on the left, the left shelves are the slide collections, and the metal files on the right side of that slide hold the negatives and the small print collections. We're fortunate to have a group of six volunteers who have worked on and are still working on and will be working on <laughs> numbering and renumbering and housing of the photos. Then the next big step will be to enter the collection into our past perfect computer catalog. If you look for the Bradley collection now, but in become the library, you won't see anything, very little about it because it hasn't been entered yet, and that's going to be a big task. I have a list to hear the names of, of the volunteers who are working on it. Uh, some of them are here today. Mark Irwin is the person who's pictured in the photo. He's a sort of a railroad buff, so he is a very valuable asset. The Bradley Collection expands beyond Cumberland County. It includes subjects that will attract visitors from beyond the county's borders. There are many railroad buffs who will come here for the railroad collection. The Bradleys didn't want their collection to be broken up and dispersed into various collections. They wanted it to be kept together, all in one place where people could come and see it and, and use it for research. This collection is another very valuable asset to the Historical Society and will attract people from afar, similar to what the Indian School Collection does at the current time. The photograph collection numbers likely over one million photographs and negatives. We divided the collection into five subcategories. These are the, the five subcategories. Railroads, which is about half of the collection. Counties, municipalities, the family genealogy, that's, they did a lot of their own genealogy, so that's a related to Bradley and related families. A miscellaneous section, the small prints and the slides.
So this is an example of, of our photo number. We needed it to, our photos, the photos to have numbers because if you're going to enter them in the computer, every photograph has to have a unique individual number. And also, if you take a photo out of one of the boxes, how are you going to get it back in unless you, you have a number and know which box it goes in? So we, we came up with a system of four-part number, uh, and this is a, a, the number for a photograph of uh, Viola Kirchhoff feeding her animals at the Bowling Springs Zoo. The number begins B2, which B, of course, stands for Bradley, and the second part of the B2 is the second part of that collection is counties and municipalities. The C27 refers, C stands for Cumberland County, and it's the 27th box of photos of Cumberland County. It's in the eighth folder in that box, and it is the ninth photo in the folder. So, that's, so if, we can, if I take that out of there, I can get it back in by going to the box that's labeled B2C27. I know it goes in there. Okay, I'd like to begin our overview of the collection with photos of Jim and Mary and their careers. I'm going to illustrate this section with photos from the family and genealogy part of the collection. It's number B3, as you can see in this breakdown of what the, th the four sections are of the family and genealogy. The Brad Jim Bradley had a special interest in Cumberland County because he was born and raised in South Middleton Township. In this photo we see Jim, his name is actually James, on the left with his two brothers, Robert and Thomas. Jim was the middle of child of the three, and this photo was taken by the, the Olin Mills studio when they came to Mount Holly and they were set up in the old Mount Holly Inn. Jim was a graduate of Boyd Springs High School, class of 1953, and he was a proud member of the school's award-winning band. The Bradley family had deep roots in Cumberland County, and at one time they owned the property known as Fallen Arches. This house and farm was later owned by Frank Maslin, and is now owned by Dr. Drew Stoken. A love of railroads was instilled early in, in Jim's life. The family had a large train layout that he still has, and they called it the village plastic bill, that wasn't too original, <laughs> as seen in this December 1955 photo. Their home was also located in, at Mount Zion, which is near Carlisle Junction, which is well known to railroaders. So he lives within walking distance of Carlisle Junction. His parents were George Abram Bradley and Esther Romaine Heffelfinger. This photo was taken of them in 1962. After high school, Jim served in the U.S. Navy from, for four years, 1953 to 57. This is the formal portrait of him in his naval uniform. In this photo, he's being congratulated for a promotion in rank. He graduated from the U.S. Navy Photography School in Pensacola, Florida in 1954. And that's where he learned the skills that he would use during, his na during and after his naval days. During the year 1956, he served on the USS Valley Forge. This and the, and the following photo, these are sort of unexplained informal photos that were taken <laughs> on board ship. Uh, we're not sure what the story is behind. That was one of his friends, and <laughs> this was later in the evening. <laughs> Jim made this Christmas card when he was in the Navy. That's his face and his camera. And that started sort of a tradition that he had, that he used an original photograph each year 
to make a Christmas card to send to his friends. From 1958 to 1987, Jim worked in Harrisburg for the Allied Picks Service. They were a commercial photography studio that supplied photographs for the Patriot News Company newspaper. So here we see him in August of 1958. His office was located on North Cameron Street in Harrisburg. It was hard work, as we, <laughs> as we can see in this photo. <laughs> This was one of his professional portraits as an Allied Picks photographer. The Allied Picks building was flooded by Hurricane Agnes in 1972. And here we see Jim with some of his co-workers. They have been cleaning up their building. Many of, the, of their pre-1972 negatives were lost in this flood. It was the 1970s that Jim met Mary Or Ormanowski a Polish Catholic girl from York, Pennsylvania. This is her high school graduation photograph. She graduated from Millersville University in 1968 with a degree in journalism. And in 1969, she began working for the Patriot News, the York branch, as a reporter and special features writer. Here she is in her office in 1970. This photo was taken for a Sunday sports feature that ran in April of 1970. So Jim and Mary met through their work with the Patriot News. His friends at Allied Picks had a wedding party for him in April of 1975. And the next month on May 10th, 1975, Jim and Mary were married. And they had a very happy marriage and enjoyed each other's interests. We have a few pictures here from their wedding. Um, throwing the rice and to prove that they actually were married. <laughs> and off on for their honeymoon. Mary often accompanied Jim on his photo adventures. This photo was taken in 1985 when she was with him on a railroad trip to Starners in Adams County. Mary had studied photography herself and some of her photos are included in the collection. They lived in a three-story brick house at 1140 North 2nd Street in Harrisburg. Here we see them at spring cleaning. <laughs> Mary transferred from the York branch to the Harrisburg offices of the Patriot News. She covered sports, community events, and a weekly recipe feature that was titled The Happy Cooker. Uh, Jim often referred to it as The Happy Hooker. <laughs> she, she was well known for her long-running weekly cornerstone history columns. Jim continued at Allied Picks, providing photos for the Patriot News. Here we see him at work in October of 72 at a political event to re-elect President Richard Nixon. And here he is on assignment in April of 1975. It looks like he was having a bad hair day. <laughs> this photo was taken on the last, his last day at Allied Picks in 1987. His cake was appropriately decorated with a train engine, which really developed a big interest in railroads by then. And after that, his work at Allied Picks, he worked independently. Many of the Bradley photos are in black and white. That was a, a, a medium that Jim loved, and he was a master in that field. He often included people in his pictures because he was a very outgoing or is a very outgoing person. When viewing his photos, you often ask yourself, how did he ever get in the position to take that photo? Or how did he ever capture that particular moment? These are a few examples. This is Ernest Beebe, a clocksmith, working on the clock house tower in October of 1978. And here is a fly fisherman at the dam at Brantsville in June of 79. 
for where was Jim? <laughs> and caving a cave hill in March of 1984. Now this photo in June of 79 shows Jim as he maneuvers for a better vantage point. He often worked hard and long to get what he wanted, and at night he, he used special lighting. He made most of his own prints, and he often did not use standard sizes. The next three photos were used as Christmas cards. For 50 years, Jim and Mary sent a black and white photo, approximately four by 12 inches, to their friends as a holiday greeting. This is a group of Amish children in South Newton Township who had just returned from school, taken in 1991. And this is a view of the Emerson Miller Farm in North Middleton Township with the Frosty Mountain as a backdrop, taken in 1973. And this is a view of Pole Steeple on Piney Mountain in Cook Township, taken in 1993. And believe it or not, sometimes Jim got in trouble. This photo was taken in uh, 1979, and it shows him at the Lady Keystone Open. A photographer took this picture, and he, uh, <clears throat> he had a little story he made up about the picture that, that Jim had snapped a photograph of Nancy Lopez when she was trying to make a shot, and it ruined her shot, and she lost the match, all because of him. So he was grounded, and that woman was there to guard him so he didn't try to take any more pictures. <laughs> that didn't really happen, but that's, that was the story. It could, could have happened if you know Jim. <laughs> Jim often photographed events here at the Society, and he even had his own photo exhibit here in the fall of 1992. It was entitled, Hey Ollie, Let's Go Railroading. Ollie was a friend of his, a, a retired railroad man, and he'd call him and say, Hey Ollie, let's go railroading, and they would go out and take pictures. This popular exhibit covered this entire room, and as you can see, it was for Mary, dedicated to Mary. And there, there's, so I think, I'm not sure both of those are railroaders, but I know that Jim Largen, who's here today, is one of those people who was at the exhibit. He also mounted an exhibit of railroad photos each, each year at the railroad station on Market Street in Harrisburg. We have those photos in our collection now. Now about a third of, of the photograph collection is related to the railroads of northeastern United States. These images document the history and significance of the railroad industry. It's B1 section of the collection, and it's broken down, as you can see, the listing all the different railroad lines and places that he traveled. We're going to just look at a sampling of the hundreds of thousands of photos that he took of railroads. His photos are carefully dated. Uh, I'm not going to give complete dates for this talk. And Jim knew the language of railroads. After you work with these a while, you, you begin to catch on to what, what he's saying, and the, because they're all labeled. Trains are usually identified by the number of the engine and the direction that the train is traveling when the photo was taken. This spectacular photo shows a Reading Railroad excursion train westbound crossing the Susquehanna River in April of 1961. <clears throat> these special excursions were were called the Iron Horse Rambles. Here we see passengers in the coach when the PRR Manhattan Limited at the Harrisburg Station, taken on Christmas Eve, 1964. This, is the, this train was called the Spirit of St. Louis, pulled by a diesel engine at the Harrisburg Station in June of 65. And this PRR engine named Jun Juniata is pulled by a GG1 electric engine is arriving at the Harrisburg station in April of 66. This is PR 2026 West. They called that engine a sharp nose and diesel engine. It's arriving at the station in Mount Union 
1960. The Pennsylvania Railroad Special Excursion Train shown here is carrying passengers on the Cumberland Valley Branch near Appalachian Drive in August of 1962. This is a view taken from Route 15 of what was then the new <coughs> PRR yard that was in operation in Charmanstown in July of 1965. The Gettysburg Railway ran an excursion train from Gettysburg to Mount Holly Springs in the mid-1980s. Here we see that train at Piney Mountain south of Hunter's Run in September of 83. In this photo, it appears that the westbound Reading 2102 is racing traffic on Route 34 <laughs> in the South, in the Holly Gap of South Mountain, just south of Mount Holly Springs in the May of 1962. Here's the Reading 2100 pa passing the upper mill at Mount Holly Springs in May of 1961. The Iron Horse Ramble 2102 eastbound is passing the station at Mount Holly Springs in April of 62. The Reading 472 called the Digger is eastbound approaching Carlisle Junction in October of 1973. I think an interesting play there with the power lines. Here westbound 2124 starts the climb towards Hunter's Run, approaching the mill race at the upper mill in the Holly Gap, just south of Mount Holly in June of 61. That particular engine is now in, at Steamstown in uh, Scranton. This Reading local is westbound on the Carlisle Branch at Craighead in February of 66. The Little Stone House this, the background is still standing. This shot was taken, taken at 6.30 in the morning on August 4th, 1962, when the Pennsylvania Railroad Atlantic City Excursion was arriving to pick up passengers at the Carlisle Station. That station is now known as Hope Station. And here is engine 972 approaching the South York Street crossing in Mechanicsburg in May of 1985. This again was a, a special excursion train for rail fans. Jim often photographed and visited with employees of the railroads and captured them at work. Here's a Reading track gang working on a retimbering switch project on the G and H branch at Carlisle Junction in April of 72. And this is a track, race, track raising gang of work on the Cumberland Valley Railroad line at Newville in August of 76. This is a, I didn't know that they had snow plows for trains, but I never thought about it. A snow plow extra is pushed by two Penn Central diesel engines and so work on the Cumberland Valley branch of the Pennsylvania Railroad in February of 78. This is an old PRR wooden caboose that was photographed at the PRR engine terminal in Hagerstown in April of 1960. And here's agent Jim Patton at his desk at work in the Reading Station at Mount Holly in February of 1966. And Here's Jim Largen, who's in the audience today, the second trick operator at the Lima Interlocking Tower at work in November of 1982. <clears throat> the tower was uh, located at the junction of the Pennsylvania Railroad's Cumberland Valley Branch and North Central Branch in Le Moyne. It's called Lima Tower. This is an earlier view of that tower, taken in August of 74. The tower, this tower has been saved and it was moved to Stroudsburg in Lancaster County where it was restored and still stands. Jim also recorded many train accidents. 
These next three photos show, a spectac show some spectacular views of a derailment of a Reading Gettysburg Branch train west of the Lower Mill in Holly Gap. That was in June 25th of 1969. You can see some of the cars rolled into the Mountain Creek. In the background there is, you can see the Deer Lodge. And some of the cars spilled their, their load into Mountain Creek. And the next, these next three photos show damage from the Hurricane Agnes, the flood damage to the Reading G&H branch at Carlisle Junction. And this first one was taken not long after Agnes, in July of 1972. I think Jim was fast, he took a lot of pictures of this. I was fascinated by the contortions of the rails. These two others were taken in March of 1974. And due to all this flooding and damage, the line to Carlisle was never rebuilt. On March 19, in March 1970, there was the derailment of coal cars here in Carlisle on West High Street. That must have been a mess. And in January 21st, on January 21st, 1977, there was a 19 car derailment on the Cumberland Valley branch north of Elliotson. That's not far from Plainfield. And here's a night view of the PRR station, Carmel Valley Branch at Camp Hill, taken in February of 63. And unfortunately, that station is gone. So that was a big chunk of the collection is the, are the railroads. But Jim's photos show life in a variety of places and activities in Cumberland and surrounding counties. These images add immensely to the documentation of our local and regional history. And this is what we find in B2 section of the collection. It's shown in this list, and you see all the different areas that are covered. We're going to just take a quick look at some selected local photos from this part of the collection. These are cattle, cows in the meadow along South Mountain near Boiling Springs in September of 61. The, the Wise Farm, or earlier the Craighead Farm, with its beautiful brick end barn located at Craighead, is seen from Bonnybrook Road in June of 65. Fortunately, that vista still exists if you could drive by there. It's one of the prettiest sites in the county. And here we see cattle by meadow, or ca cattle in a, in a meadow, by an old stone bridge on a farm along Blue Mountain, north of Middlesex, in May of 65. He loved uh, things related to, our, to uh, agriculture and nature. Corn shocks on a farm near Rosmoyne in October of 62. And a full moon on a fall night in October of 62. For some reason, Jim had a thing for full moons. Here's another one. A full moon bathing locust blossoms on Lander Lane near Mount Holly in, in May of 62. A wheat harvest on the Norman Rhinefield farm near Longstorf in July of 74. And here's an old order of Mennonite working on the shop at the Shirk farm on Quarry Hill Road with a truck on Route 81 in the background. It was taken in May of 1971. That photo has a lot to say. <laughs> and uh, there's a warning of what was to come. <laughs> Jim photographed many historical sites, many of which are now gone. This is Spangler's Mill on the Yellow Breaches in Lower Allen Township in June of 1959, you would not recognize it now. The mill's gone, the bridge is gone, the dam's gone. <laughs> and here's Watts Covered Bridge on the Conneguana north of Carlisle in June of 66. And that bridge burned in 1970. 
Barnett's Mill in Yellow Breaches in Dickinson Township in January of 63. This mill is still standing but in jeopardy. McCracken Mill at the head of the Big Spring in April of 1958. There was an effort to save it, but it was unsuccessful. That was one of the oldest mill in the Big Spring. So Jim took many photos of snow and winter storms. Titled Winter Wonderland, this is a view of the Yellow Breaches Creek at Fuhrer's Mill on Route 34, taken in March of 1962. He was adding all of this. <laughs> there, this is a view of a drift clogged road near Brantsville on December 31st, 1962. Snow-covered driftwood was the focus of this scene of the dam at the Yellow Breaches Creek on, at Brandsville in January of 1962. <clears throat> the old Brant farm is in the background, and both those are gone now. And Booker's Mill, as it was known then, or the mill at, in the lake at Boiling Springs in February of 62, which fortunately is still standing. Jim also photographed many fires and accidents. The curve at Eden Mill on Route 34 on the way to Mount Holly was for many years the scene of some bad accidents. This one was in 1959 and it shows a car that ended up in the mill race. A general alarm fire at South Hanover and Pomfret Streets on Good Friday, April 9, 1971 the fire and a shot of the firemen at work. Jim was there for the final days of some local buildings, such as the demolition of the Church of God on West Lowther Street uh, in October of 1974. That's where some of you may be parked today. It's now a parking lot. The demolition of the old post office at the Pitt and Lowther Street, and a few homes were also demolished then in March of 1982, and the demolition of Second Presbyterian Church on South Hanover Street in December of 72. Jim enjoyed photographing people and children. This is Jake Zygmunt with his dog Zobe on Creek Road east of Moore's Mill in March of 1977. It brings back some happy days. Boys fishing at Keeney Town on the Yellow Breaches Creek in August of 68. Here four boys enjoy a ride on the roller coaster at Williams Grove Park during the summer of 1965. So all I can think is he had to be in the front of the roller coaster turned back with his camera as they went, went down that first hill. And on May 30th, 1957, John, Jim took this photo at the opening day of the Mechanicsburg uh, swimming pool. You can see the excitement, you know, beginning of summer and off to the pool. Here are a couple, Calvin and Leona Zinn, at their farm near Mar Moordale in November of 1975. We don't know the name of the other couple. <laughs> Jim also liked to, to photograph Mennonites and the Amish. This is the, a photo on Sunday morning at the Stiles Town Mennonite Church in 1974. And home from school, now we saw this earlier, this is the detail of that earlier photo. Home, he called his home from school. It was taken on McCullough Road off Stylestown Road in South Newton Township. Jim also expressed his sense of humor in some of these photos. For many years, this Indian pointed the original way to Carlisle on Lisburn Road, rather than the new road. That's located near was located near Hickory Town. And that Indian was a landmark for many years of Middlesex Township pointing the correct way. This shot he, he titled, Putting Out the Fire Fireman. <laughs> it shows 
uh, Mr. Baldwin, 72 years old, who's cleaning the fountain, the fireman's statue at the Cullen Fire Company in uh, 1978. And he also captured Easter Bunny hopping across the Carlisle Square in April of 1982, maybe walking or hopping. And another unusual <laughs> Santa Claus getting his tra a parking ticket in Carlisle. Those meter mates have no sympathy. <laughs> One of the treasures we discovered in the collection thus far are some early views of racing at Williams Grove. This race is a race in uh, October of 1969. And car number five is Richard Smith, or he's known as Mitch Smith. He was a well-known racer from Linkelstown, Pennsylvania, and he's in the National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. Another famous racer, A.J. Foyt, raced at Williams Grove in the early 1960s, and here we see him changing a tire, and here he is getting into his car. He won the Indianapolis 500 four times, and he was at Williams Grove. This is an unusual photo of a Goodyear blimp flying over Harrisburg. All of his photos seem to say something. I know I was, I, I came across this when looking for uh, so somebody, they know some local scenes in Harrisburg, and you just don't get a building. There's always something else going on. I, I mean, I have the view of Harrisburg, but he caught it with the blimp over. <laughs> And here is Wall Street Bridge, but it was still intact. And it was used as a one-way route out of Harrisburg. I didn't know that. Jim liked to experiment with night photography. He had lights that he took out on his shoots. He often photographed this particular abandoned section foreman's house located at Hunter's Run. Or Hunter's Run. He, it was referred to as the Haunted House. In the 1960s and 70s, Jim took a series of night photos for an annual Halloween feature in the Patriot News. He often used local people and places such as these, where two witches are at the Noble Farm. Some of you may remember the Noble Barn. Noble Farm on Noble Boulevard in Carlisle in October of 1968. So he had his, his lights as well as other lights like lantern lights. The lighting in these Halloween pictures are very interesting with the several sources of light. So that was the Halloween. Now photos in the miscellaneous category begin with the designation B4. And here you see a list of the topics included in the section of the collection. So we've already seen some photos that were taken from some of these categories. Now sometime in the future I'm going to have a program for men only, which will feature the girl photos as well as the Harrisburg Street Walkers. I guess they just can come if they want. Photos that begin with the designation B5 are the small prints, most of them in color, and they're located in these metal files. They're there, but the negatives and prints are still together. These were taken between 1972 and 2006. They consist mainly of family-related photos, but there are some that are of general interest, which we will separate those two. A few examples of general interest were back to railroads again, this photo of the Amtrak Broadway, East, taken in Perry County in August of 1981. That same day, Mary took up this photo of Jim when they were crossing on the Millersburg Ferry, returning to Millersburg. In August of 1981, Jim and Mary were at Martinsburg, West Virginia, where Mary took this photo of a B&O 4303 East. And in September of 1981, they were in Hobbs, West Virginia, where they photographed a steam special that was running west. 
Now, B6 is a collection of color slides, numbering at least, the minimum is 77,000. There's over almost 300 boxes with 300 or more photos in each box. They date from between 1962 and the present. He's still adding to these. They call, these cover a full range of topics similar to the black and white prints. So I was just gonna show you a few color, colorful examples. So now we have this, we're coming into the color area here. This is the view of Carmel County taken from Route 74 on Wagner's Gap in Lower Frankfort Township in 1988. A steam excursion on the former Carmel Valley Branch near Appalachian Drive in Silver Spring. I think we saw black and white of that. Mm -hmm. right. he, went, he took several cameras with him so he would take black and white and color. Railroad signal lights on the Conwell Railway at Lee's Crossroad in Southampton Township. A, Con a Conrail section gang is burning ice off the switches at Carlisle Junction in South Middleton. Some examples of farm and agriculture again. Frosty morning at Lutztown Run in Lutztown, Monroe Township, January 1988. The dam on Yellow Breaches Creek at Cedar Cliff in Lower Allen Township. Cattle at Guystown in Upper Mifflin Township in July of 89. A view of a farm taken from Ridge Road in Southampton Township. A full moon at the Craighead Farm at Craighead Station, South Middleton, November 88. A pumpkin patch along Mountain View Road in South Newton Township. Mm. A harvest moon over a farm at the intersection of Route 34 and 174 in South, in South Middleton Township. A sunset over a cornfield on a farm on Ridge Road in South Middleton Township, September 89. And again, religion, religion, and religious and plain people. Sunday service at the Shippensburg Old Order Mennonite Meeting House at Spring Hill in Southampton Township, January 1991. Mennonite boys and girls enjoy a ball game at the Jacksonville School in South Newton Township. A fall day at Dickinson Presbyterian Church in Cummingstown, Penn Township. And some people included. The Musser Produce Stand on Trindle Road at Old Stonehouse Road, Newman Road Township. George Kennard at Ridge Road off York Road in South Middleton Township. And a few atmospheric scenic views. I never thought I'd like a photo of the Pennsylvania Turnpike, but here is one. <laughs> Traffic in the Pennsylvania Turnpike west of Potato Point Road in Hopewell Township. Honeysuckle along Ronnie Book Road near Craighead Station in South Middleton. Autumn in Laurel Lake at Pine Grove Furnace State Park in Cook Township in October 89. A foggy morning on the Yellow Breaches Creek at Lydic Station in Monroe Township, July 88. A bicyclist on Hoodow Road west of Lozierville along the Blue Mountain in Upper Frankfort Township, May 1988. That is an intriguing photo. Morning Calm in Possum Lake in Lower Frankfort Township. So this was just a quick overview of a collection that would take months to view. And we are very fortunate to be the guardian of this wonderful collection 
that will be more and more appreciated as this is explored and as time passes. We're going to close today with a few photos of Mary Bradley, who died of cancer in, on April 23, 2009. Mary loved Christmas, and here we see Mary at her home in Harrisburg with her Christmas tree in 1983. Note the always train on the left. And here she is with some of her favorite dolls and toys. This photo was taken on Mother's Day, 1997. <coughs> Mary is with Jim's mother, Esther Bradley. Mary is the reason that we have the Bradley Collection at CCHS. <coughs> Mary was very fond of us, and she told Jim that she wanted their collections to come here. Jim carried out her wishes, and he has been very good to us. The collections came to us well organized and documented. He has provided funds to pay for the processing, storage, and care of the collections. He gave us the shelving that they were on. These collections will be a permanent reminder of this great couple who lived life so fully and left so much for us and future generations to enjoy. I'm so thankful that I had the honor of knowing Jim and Bradley, Jim and Mary Bradley, and that I get to work with our collections here at CCHS. And I hope that this presentation today has given you an appreciation for this wonderful addition to the Society's photo archives. Thank you.